there's been an agenda, there's been an agenda by these governments, certainly in North America, to destroy unions and to destroy union power. And that accounts for these drops in union density. Okay? So this is a larger context. This is a, this is a big fight and this is a big context, okay? And all I want to say is that it is time to take these union privileges that we have and to exercise and to send, and exercise them and to send a message back to these governments that we're not going to be defeated, we're not going to be intimidated, we're not going to be manhandled with, these le with legislation that works against our collective rights. Okay? So I think that's what this is all about. And I, like I said, I really appreciate you being out here and taking time from your lunch break to come on out. And hopefully, hopefully, like I said, this, this uh, momentum will keep building. We'll work through the afternoon and keep building through the week and bring this, bring this government to account for some of the legislation, for the legislation and for some of the action they've been taking across uh, 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 toward unions. Not only toward the BCTF, but toward all unions for the past uh, four or five years, okay? So thank you. Norman, uh, Vice President of the Vancouver Teachers Federation, and I really want to thank you very much for coming out today and supporting us and in this, in, in this struggle with uh, unjust laws and unfair labor practices, and frankly, a government who do not respect international law, but decide to set their own laws. So thank you very much, all of you, for coming out. We really, really appreciate your support. And, uh, you know, we're going to win this one. Thank you. Our next speaker is a UBC faculty member who uh, I've seen on the line around town and he helped organize the last demo that we had, that demo we had last week at the Transition School here on campus. Thank you. All right, so I express my uh, appreciation for all my fellow uh, workers from UEC and students who are standing here today. I'm a member of the faculty association, like many of us here, but I want to make it clear I'm speaking as a faculty member. And I'm speaking here as a person who is also a parent with two children in the school system. And I don't know about some of the other representatives of parents, such as the president of British Columbia Confederation of Parent Advisory Councils, who somehow thinks this is only about labor dispute. But let me tell you, as a parent in the system, this is about public education. As a, as a faculty member at UBC, I've seen the impacts of this government's attack against on workers their lack of regard for the quality of education. And I've certainly seen as a parent in the, in the classrooms that my children have gone to where teachers have to provide lesson meet different learning needs from special ed to uh, ESL to behavioral needs to a whole range of different needs in the classroom and they're not given any resources to do that job. And I just marvel, I marvel at the way in which they try day after day, week after week, year after year to do a job that's bloody well impossible to do with the way this government treats them and treats our public education system. Really? Now, all of us, most of us here will probably have seen a copy of the letter, or the threatening letter that's being sent around by our administration. I think that should bring it home to us that this isn't just a struggle for the teachers are facing, this actually involves all of us. Whether we're faculty or staff, whether we're in a school, the public school system, or we're in, a, in a, a, a job site off this campus, this government disregards the concerns and the working environments of all working people. And so I'd say right now, in solidarity with our teachers, on with the struggle! Our next, actually, I'm Wayne Ross. I'm a faculty member in the uh, Faculty of Education Department of Curriculum Studies, a, a long-time uh, 
trade unionist, uh, for many years a member of the AFT. You can probably tell by my uh, accent, I'm from southern Ontario. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, here in Vancouver, where there's been such a great show, of, and, and in BC, where there's been such a great show of labor solidarity, where people really, there's a strong number of people that really understand what, where our shared interests lie. Uh, and who and in whose interest the government of BC is acting and it's not the interest of the working people yeah. one of uh, a friend of mine who uh, is a graduate I'm proud to say of uh, our programs here at the uh, in the Faculty of Education is also a teacher at Kitsilano High School his name's Paul Orlowski he's a longtime member of the BCTF and I'd like to introduce him as our next speaker Hi, thanks everybody. I got to thank you guys right away. QP, faculty members, pre-service teachers here, thanks because solidarity is the only way we're going to beat a, uh, an extreme right-wing government like this, which makes Van Der Zam and Bennett look kind of progressive. So that's kind of sad. Anyway, so I'm in my 19th year of this BCTF member, and I'm quite proud to be a, a member of the BCTF as I was in unions before that. And uh, there's been a lot of talk in the media right now over this contested term, civil society. We're hearing the right-wing groups say, well, they're breaking the law, a law that was made, as Ginny Sims so aptly put it, to break us. And so uh, let's talk a little bit about civil society, and not in the ways that uh, Vancouver Sun and them are talking about it. But there's a lot of uh, cornerstones of civil society at stake right here, and public education being one. But uh, so is collective bargaining rights, and I think all of you know about that in QP anyway, and the other unions here. And uh, as well, civil dissent is part of democracy and civil society. And you know, you know that, and we're doing it right now, and we're only going to be able to uh, hang in with solidarity. And, uh, and let's talk a little bit about collective bargaining rights, because you, we all know that that was a deal made between workers and uh, the elites uh, several decades ago, we would do wages, working conditions, benefits, all of that. But by the Liberals uh, imposing a new contract on the BCTF, if they're successful here, they have effectively declared an end to collective bargaining rights. And that's why we all need to stick together here, uh, all the unions, solidarity. I don't know if it's going to take that scary term for the elites, general strike, but if they're going to keep doing this to us, that's maybe what it takes. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to try another cheer. Despite the rain, we're going to try another cheer. Okay? We've done this one before, so we're all warmed up. Unions united will never be defeated. 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 Teachers united will never be defeated. Unions united will never be defeated. Teachers united will never be defeated. Unions united will never be defeated. Teachers united will never be defeated. Unions united will never be defeated. Unions united will never be defeated. Unions united will never be defeated. My name is Joe Canadian, and I believe in fair and free bargaining. I believe in unions and the right to job action. I believe in bargaining working conditions. I believe in bargaining salaries. I believe in activism. I believe in COOPY, and I believe in union activism, and this is union activism at its finest, okay? So thank you so much again for coming out. We've got students coming out, finally getting out of their classes. They're finally letting them out of their classes, okay? 
We're on a time clock here. They will be out. Okay, let, let's try the let's try the Bill 12 one again. Okay, so well, no, let's just try the the classic Kill Bill 12. 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 Okay. Put it out of its misery. Pardon? Which ones? Where? Oh, really? No way. That's appalling. I don't accept it. They better watch out because we got some. Oh, yeah. It's going to be very, very popular option. Uh -oh. I have a. You need to go, yeah. I have a statement. Uh, I have a statement from one of my colleagues. Petra Gassenmuller. Petra is a sessional on this campus. <laughs> Wasn't able to make it, so I'm going to read. I'm going to read Petra's statement here, and she says this. The passing of Bill 12 not only greatly undermines the collective bargaining process, but also hijacks a fundamental democratic right, that of dissent. Bill 12 is an arrogant display of arbitrary power of a government that believes in mandating and legislating disagreement rather than in democratically and collectively addressing it. It's therefore not surprising that the BC Liberal Party has had a history of greatly dysfunctional labor relations. The double standard is on display when public dissent is repressed by making it illegal, while at the same time, the BC Liberal government reserves all powers is as disturbing as it is morally reprehensible. This is from my colleague, Petra. As we know, education is fundamental to the advancement and prosperity of not just ours, but of any society, given the ever-increasing demands of today's global marketplace. At a time when the provincial coffers are full to the brim, education deserves our full support after years of neglect, restraint, and personal sacrifice. As public service sector employees, we should all take note that whatever we permit the BC Liberals to impose on teachers today will be ours to deal with tomorrow. Whether we like it or not, whether we are students, educators, parents, union members, we're all in this together. That's from Petra Gantenmuller. You folks probably know that the um, QP2278 has had their own problems, and I'm happy to report that they've been very supportive of the BC teachers. We've got a member of their executive board, Dave Oskerson, who's going to say a few words representing QP2278. Hi, everybody. Uh, I came out to a smaller rally that we had a few days ago out in front of the transition school here at UBC where BCTF uh, brothers and sisters are working. Uh, right now they're striking. But uh, what I said then was that actually uh, as a sort of junior academic, a lot of people in my family and friends had told me that they thought I would make a great teacher. 
And I was always discouraged and turned away from it. And I thought, oh man, that's too hard. Why would I take a job that's so difficult as trying to convince teenagers to learn something? Uh, but after seeing how much spirit and resolve all the teachers have out here in their dispute with the government, with the wrong-headed provincial government, then I'm encouraged and I think that maybe it would actually be a great place to work after all if I was working side by side with uh, teachers like the ones we see here today. And I just wanted to say especially thank you to all of the teachers who've shown us that it is possible to stand up for your rights in our society and to say no when someone tries to strip them away from you. When we were on strike in 2003, the government took away our right to strike and they legislated us back to work. And now I'm almost ashamed to say, we basically bowed our heads and went home. Well, we actually went to a, a tent that was pitched out in front of the sub building and sat in the mud in the rain for a few days, miserable. But we basically went home. And now the teachers have shown us that you don't have to do that. You can stand up for your rights and you can say no when someone's trying to strip them away from you. So for that uh, shining example to us and to all the people of BC, I want to thank all the teachers very much. Yeah. Our next speaker is a, a member of the Faculty of Education, a professor in the Department of Curriculum Studies. She's an art educator named Kit Brown. Thank you. I felt that I had to speak today. I am a teacher. I have been for 30 years in British Columbia. My husband is a teacher. My two children are sitting at home right now. My husband, as we speak, is on the picket line. He voted against the strike. He voted because of personal reasons that he felt it wasn't a good thing for teachers to do. But he has been on the picket line since the, pic the picket lines went up because he realizes, as many teachers in this province realize, that what is really important in schools is the very many reasons that people are on this picket line and that it is really important that my message to you is we go back to schools when we go back to schools with compassion and understanding that people are out for different reasons that they are out in support of kids that they are out for our student teachers that their lives will be better my husband will not retire in June because he's lost whatever it is now, eight days that give him the magic number for retirement. But he is willingly walking a picket line for those teachers who are coming into the system and for those children, our children, who are in the system right now. I hope all of us go back with that, that sense of teachers are there caring for kids and each other. When we go into the schools, let's make sure that message goes across as well. Thank you. We're very happy to have a member of the BCTF Executive Committee with us today. She's a former teacher from uh, at McGee Secondary and has taught in Canada and other places around the world. Her name's Irene Lanziker. Thanks so much, and I just want to tell Wayne I still am a teacher on leave for Vancouver. I uh, taught at McGee and Templeton. And I want to first of all uh, tell you how important it is uh, to see the support that we've had from the public. I, I've been a teacher since 1978. I've been, this is the third strike that I've been involved in a, as a Vancouver teacher, and we have never, ever seen the level of public support that we've seen in this strike. And I have to tell you how important that is to teachers on the picket line. I've been with teachers on the picket line in Surrey, in Kamloops, in Burnaby, uh, and in Vancouver, at both of the schools that I've taught at in Vancouver. And the level of public support that they're feeling is absolutely fabulous. We've been fighting for class size composition and those kinds of protections for more than 30 years. And I don't know whether the student teachers have 
come out yet, but teaching is about a lot of things. But one of the things it is about, as well as preparing and marking and advocating for kids, is fighting for protections for those kids in classrooms. We've been doing that for 30 years. We're doing it today on the picket line. We're going to do it till we retire, and after we retire, we won't give up because public education is so important to us and it's so important to you. I know that's why you're here today. And just in terms of that public support, I think that when you have the Crown Prosecutors on side, you've won the battle for public opinion. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> and it is that public support and it is the support of other unions which is so tremendously important to us, that is going to help us resolve this. That's one of the big pieces of the resolution that we're going to see before we give up that fight. And I want to just mention QP because uh, these are our brothers and sisters in schools, they're our brothers and sisters in unions, and their support has been absolutely fabulous. So we can't thank QP enough. teaching is about, and we talk to our kids about this, it's about standing up for what we believe in. And that's what we're doing. We're taking a stand for our rights, for the rights of kids, and for the quality of public education in this province. I thank you so much for your support in that fight, because it's an important fight for every citizen of British Columbia, across Canada, and the world. We've seen messages of support from the South African Democratic Teachers Union, from the Mexican teachers, from the National Education Association in the United States, 2.7 million teachers strong. And so those are the things that make us know that our fight is worth it and that we're gonna win it. I want to, uh, I have to go off because I'm on the group that's meeting with Freddie and we've been called to a meeting this afternoon, which is good news. And also, I'm illegally parked at UBC, and I'm a former UBC student, so I know what kind of trouble that can get you into, and my son has experienced that as a UBC student, put to the tune of several hundred dollars last year. So, I'm going to say goodbye, and once again, thank you so much for your support. The kids of British Columbia are worth it. Thank you. One of the reasons we're having this rally today is because as uh, I was walking back with a few folks from our demo down at the Trans University Transition School last week, we ran into a member of the Education Students Association. And she said to us that, she, that the students were really concerned about what was going on and they felt like they needed to do something to show the uh, student support for the teachers and what the teachers were standing for. And so I'm very happy to, to have a couple of representatives from the ESA uh, for you today. The first speaker is Janine Tang. She's the president of the Education Students Association. Actually, she's the executive committee chairperson. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Education Students Association and UBC student teachers, I'm here today to express our support to the BC teachers in their job actions. Teachers are committed to improving the publication, and that is why they're fighting for classroom, better classroom conditions. They are taking a stand because they care and are concerned for the well-being of the children. With larger class sizes, teachers' ability to effectively teach and, teach and students' ability to learn are greatly impinged. And with classrooms being so diverse, it's not easy for a teacher to accommodate to every student's learning needs. With a wide range of student needs, Teachers try to provide as much help as possible, but they can only do so much. Even with the great support workers that we have, and I'm talking about resource teachers, special ed education assistants, counselors and librarians and so forth, there just aren't enough of them. Back when I was in elementary school, my, sky, my school library, I would say, was open almost every single day, but now it's open two to three days a week. With the cutbacks on support workers, Students, especially those with learning difficulties and those who are ESL learners, are not able to receive that one-to-one -one help that they need. To try, to try to accommodate for the expansion and diversity in classrooms, many teachers work after hours with no pay to aid students in their learning. 
I mean, I remember one incident back in high school when I had to make up for a test that I missed due to health reasons. My teacher allowed me to come in after school to complete it rather than I use my class time and miss the lesson of the day. So if you think teachers only working during school hours, guess again. Teachers take time out of their busy schedules to mark and grade papers, plan for upcoming lessons, assist students with ex who require extra help during the wee hours of the morning, their lunch break, and after school. For, take me for example, I'm actually on my full practice up, and I do find myself coming in the mornings to set up for the lesson of the day. I often use my lunch hour to prep for my next lesson to make sure that everything goes well. And after schools, I'm either prepping for what I'm planning for tomorrow or grading papers. Or marking homework, sorry. And on the weekends, I spend hours preparing for upcoming lessons. With the varying levels of student abilities, it's not easy to write up a lesson plan that will fit every child's learning requirements. Also, with the limited teaching materials, many teachers have to dig into their own pockets to pay for the school supplies. These are just a few of the many problems needing to be resolved. We need to keep in mind that teachers are the ones who educate and pass on the knowledge students need to succeed in the future. Teachers don't enter the field of, the, of teaching because of the money or because they think it's easy, but because they want to nurture, inspire, and guide students on a path where they will always be willing to learn. As teachers of tomorrow, we want to give back to what was once given to us, an education that has gotten us this far. If it weren't for the teacher's dedication to make a positive difference, we wouldn't be here today. Teachers play a crucial role in every child's academic and social development. They are our stepping stones to success. Teachers want what is best for the children, and that is why they are voicing their concerns. Therefore, I'm asking you, the public, to join me and others in supporting the teacher's right to fight for a better education. Thank you. Hey. Our next speaker is uh, a senator to the Education Students Association. His name is Joe Mergen. Right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Joe Mergen. I'm the student representative at the UBC Senate for uh, the Faculty of Education. I've talked with uh, many of my uh, fellow faculty students, and uh, those that I've talked with, we wholeheartedly support the position of our teachers. As uh, pre-service teachers, we have obvious concerns about the issues in this province, and we have a vested interest in the future of education. Our teachers are professionals, and as professionals, their number one concern is the client, which is the student, the children. The major issue, despite what many think, is not about a pay raise. It's uh, about the quality of education. Uh, I don't think people understand how important the issue of classroom sizes is. Our teachers are being overrun. A lot of classes are in the plus 30s and the quality of education is suffering because of this. People need to be made aware that the classroom is much more diverse than it ever has been. I, from what I hear on the radio, some of our critics say, when I was in school, we had plus 30, it was no problem. The classroom is a lot more diverse. Teachers have to deal with issues from social issues, students with exceptionalities, children with ESL, and much more. This is no longer a time where the disadvantaged kids are left behind in education. At the same time, they need to be able to instruct every student. To compound this, our teachers are not getting the help they need. With cutbacks, the special education, they're being left alone to deal with not just these large classrooms, but these large, complex, diverse classrooms. Without the proper support from the sports staff, the education needs of all students are, not, are being left behind. I've been, I've been hear, hearing a lot of talk about the rights of teachers, etc. We also have the focus that every student in BC has the right to education. That's every student. It cannot be expected. It cannot be expected that under the current conditions that every student is receiving adequate instruction. As professionals, we need to allow our teachers some control and say in their field. They know the public education is suffering. This is not simply about a pay raise again. The major issue is the quality of our public school education. One more thing, to all of the pre-service students, our student teachers out here, uh, UBC and SFU are having a joint uh, rally in front of the VSB building on Friday. That's uh, this Friday, six, 3 to 6 p.m. on Broadway and Gravel. So come out 
and join with the SFU students and support our teachers. Our next speaker is Ann Guthrie Warman. She's been up here once before. She was so good, we're bringing her back already. Uh, she's a member of the Vancouver School Teachers Association. She's the vice president of the Vancouver School Teachers Association. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out today. Uh, I've already thanked the QP workers. You have been amazing, really. We are so yeah. grateful to our QP colleagues for the kind of support. Yeah. I also want to thank the uh, university teachers who are here, who are speaking and, 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 and uh, standing here in support of, of our actions. And in particular, I want to speak to the student teachers of UBC. Um, I, I have a vested interest in this. I've been a teacher educator. I worked at UBC for two years in the teacher education program. Uh, I then uh, went over to the other side and worked at Simon Fraser, where I still <laughs> do actually do some teaching. I went over to the dark side. Let me tell you, they aren't doing anything like this today. So UBC is leading in the education faculty in terms of showing some support for what uh, teachers are doing. Part of it, anyway. Canadian Association of University Teachers who have sent a very strong letter of support to the BCTF and to the provincial government telling them very clearly that this law, Bill 12, is wrong, wrong, wrong and it is actually a violation of all the legislation that all, all the, uh, the international courts have ruled against this, this government, Campbell's government, when he ripped up contracts three years ago when he imposed bills 19 and 20 taking away our um, our class size and class composition they don't pay any attention to international law why should we follow their bad laws <laughs> I have seen and, and I think your, your your our student colleagues here and and Irene have alluded to the deterioration in conditions of service in uh, British Columbia schools. I've seen them firsthand because I lived in England for 16 years and I worked under the uh, tyranny of Margaret Thatcher and watched her break the most powerful union in Europe, the National Union of Minors, and then go after teachers who were not united in the way that we are here. And I have seen enormous deterioration since 1990. When I came to work in Vancouver, I thought, what a fabulous place to work. I was from here, but I'd lived abroad for 16 years. You know, we had money for site development grants, we had class size, we got class size, class composition language into our contract. We had all of those good things going on in Vancouver in particular, you know, a kind of beacon in British Columbia education. The deterioration that I have seen in 16 years is truly shocking, colleagues. And I'm telling you, we have been papering over the cracks too long. That is why Campbell government has turned teachers who are normally law-abiding, very, you know, fairly conservative, very, very decent, you know, caring human beings into, I guess, what would construe as lawbreakers. We are determined to fight this fight till the end for our students, for all unions, and in particular, for our rights as educators. Thank you. This is another uh, round two. If you, we've been going since 11:30, folks. You missed out on a great. Uh, we're going to we're bringing these people back for encores. This is Paul Orlowski. He's a teacher at Kitsilano High School. He has a degree, at least one, maybe more, from the uh, University of British Columbia. And uh, he's going to come up and tell us what it's like in the classroom. And I think he's going to have something special to say to our uh, teacher education students. And thanks for coming out, QP workers, pre-service teachers, faculty, all the people who are out here, and just members of the general public, as you know, is 57% supporting BC teachers and 29% supporting uh, Campbell's uh, anti-public sector union, anti-civil society agenda. So thank you. 
Now, I do want to say that we're going to, uh, teachers are actually going to support the student teachers who on Friday have a uh, rally at Granville and Broadway. I think it's at 3 o'clock, I'm not sure. And teachers will be out supporting the student teachers from UBC and SFU who are taking this stand. And that's all about solidarity. Now, before we get into uh, talking about solidarity in the law, I want to talk about civil society, which I mentioned a few, uh, not too long ago when I was up here a few minutes ago. And the parts of civil society that the media, Vancouver Sun, Can West, are not talking about, they're talking about breaking the law, you know, as uh, uh, bad for civil society, while a strong public education system is good for civil society. So are collective bargaining rights, and so uh, is civil dissent for unjust laws. Now, on collective Woo! bargaining rights, Most of you know with collective bargaining rights is a deal done between labor and the elite several decades ago uh, across Western nations in general to strengthen democracy actually. They were, fe they were fearful of a Bolshevik revolution in uh, Western Europe and uh, North America. Um, now, the, the, what the liberals are proposing is to end collective bargaining rights. They said teaching is an essential service, the only place in the Western nations to say they cannot do this, they cannot strike. So they then said, you, uh, you guys can negotiate working conditions and wages. Well, then they said no to working conditions. You're only allowed to uh, discuss and negotiate wages. And then they said, well, really, you can't do that either. It's zero percent. <laughs> now, since the Liberals came into power in 2001, they've only imposed contracts on BCTF. This is why it's an affront to collective bargaining rights. And it's an affront to all working families, working class, middle class, and it's a front to uh, civil society itself. Lastly, I want to say, and uh, uh, Anne and a few of the other speakers talked about uh, the lack of honor in Gordon Campbell's behavior in his cabinet toward the law. Nine violations of UN international law, nine times. Drunk driving! Right, something about Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, he didn't think that was a, a law that needed to be respected. Oh, yes, I do have a little button here about something about Mr. Perfect goes to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, I just want to finish off by saying, um, yes, respect for the law is important. Of course it is in a civil society, and teachers generally don't want to break the law. But really, what it comes down to in a civil society is justice trumps the law always. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, we really want to thank uh, all the QP locals on campus for their support, for the teachers. Our next speaker is uh, president of 2950, QP 2950, Natalie Lysen. What a great crowd we have today. Give yourselves a hand. There are over 5,000 QP members here at UBC representing workers at UBC and we're standing in solidarity today for what the teachers are doing fighting back against this government. I want to talk today about not only some of the history behind um, the unions and where we've come as a civil society but also speak from the point of view as, as a parent myself. I mean t this month for some that may not be aware is, is official month that recognizes women as persons in Canada. Before 1929, women did not have the right to vote, and women did not have the right to hold office. And it was a group of five women, the famous five, who stood up and fought against the legislation which went all the way to British Parliament to get women to, as recognized under, under the Act to be recognized as persons to have those. And so those are some of the roots that we come from in terms of fighting legislation and, and ensuring that we have fairness and the rights for people. Woo! came into power, its mandate has been to break unions. It has been to break workers. Yes. It has been to drive people further into poverty and dismantle the safety nets that we have within our society. 
We've seen over and over again the ripping up of contracts, legislation putting people back to work, just completely obliterating our right to free collective bargaining. And it has to stop. We have to continue to stand up against this government because they don't like it today, so let's pass a bill tomorrow. It's, it's about ensuring that we have that right for free collective bargaining. As a, as a parent, I am just overwhelmed by what's happening in our education system. Every week, my child brings home another fundraising event because the school doesn't have money for computers or gym equipment or something within, within their school system. And that's just driving me nuts. The thing that drew me, drew me over the edge last year was when my son brought home um, a piece of paper to register for gymnastics so that they could bring school equipment into the school so that they can have some physical activity within their school. I mean, how much more money do we as taxpayers have to take out of our pockets because the government is not properly supporting the systems that we have in place in this province? It has to stop and we have to make a stand. Hey. is not a corporation. It's not about profit. This is about non-profit and ensuring the services are there for everyone, not the elite, not the high upper class that can afford to send their kids to private schools. We want our, our school systems and our education to remain public. We want our workers to be under the public ed sector within this community. They are supplying the best education that we can give our kids who are going to be our leaders and our teachers for tomorrow. Thank you all for coming out and support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On, on October 7th, the first day of the strike, I was up at my local secondary school, which is uh, Charles Tupper, over on the yeah. east side. <laughs> and uh, ran into Bonnie Brunel and started chatting with her and then realized that there was a connection between Bonnie and um, the president of the UBC Faculty Association, Elliot Brunell, and he's our next speaker. I bring you greetings from the UBC Faculty Association and especially the executive. I want to point out that we have been active in supporting the teachers, and especially in decrying Bill 12. Uh, we sent, before Bill 12 was approved, a letter to the Premier uh, suggesting that, well, what did we say? Uh, the Faculty Association calls, the Faculty Association ex Executive calls upon the provincial government to immediately withdraw Bill 12 and enter into direct negotiations with the teachers. Our provincial organization, <laughs> organization, the Confederation of University Faculty Associations of British Columbia, sent a letter to the Premier as well on the same day. Then last weekend I was in Victoria for a meeting of the Western Regional Conference of Faculty Associations. That is a conference that normally does not pass resolutions. However, the members there thought that the situation in British Columbia was so in such a situation that they decided to break the rules and to pass the resolution. This is, involves faculty associations from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia. 14 of them. University of Manitoba, University of Winnipeg, Brandon University, University of Regina, University of Saskatoon, uh, University of Alberta in Edmonton, Athabasca, University of Calgary, Lethbridge and the five okay. universities in British Columbia, including Thompson Rivers, the newest one. And we resolved that the delegates to this meeting, the faculty associations, expressed their support for and solidarity with members of the BC Teachers Federation in their attempt to improve learning conditions for their students, to achieve a fair package, and to regain free collective bargaining. And be it further resolved that the delegates of the 2005 Western Regional Conference expressed to the government of British Columbia the profound disappointment at the removal of collective bargaining rights from BC public school teachers and the actions of the government of British Columbia and its agents to constrain the legitimate political protest by public school teachers against an unjust law. Yeah. Hey. Further, 
later at that meeting, representatives from the Canadian Association of University Teachers, CAUT, were there, and they also sent a letter to the Premier, and that's already been referred to, the rather strong wording, but what hasn't been referred to, they have donated $10,000 to uh, Feed the Teachers Fund. <laughs> More muffins. Faculty at UBC also bargained under severe restrictions set by the provincial government. And we too would benefit from new negotiating arrangements just like the teachers would. Education is the cornerstone of a democratic society and should not be placed in jeopardy by political whim or vindictiveness. In order to have a prosperous society in a world where knowledge is power, we must have a government that shows respect for education and for educators. I call upon the government to make a new commitment in its relationship to both. Thank you. Our next speaker is, uh, if you were out here early, standing in the rain at 11.30, you heard her give a really an inspiring speech that really hit the nail on the head. She's the president of QP116, Colleen Garvey. I want to let you know that QP members in the Kootenai are all out today in, in support of the BC T T TF. Yay! 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 Tomorrow, the QP members in the interior will be all out in support of the BC TF, standing shoulder to shoulder with the K-12 and the teachers of the interior. Yay! And then Friday, QP members in Vancouver <laughs> Lower Mainland and Fraser Valley will be out in support of the General Strike. QP members across the province have been telling our locals that the government attacks on the teachers are attacks on all of us. That legislative contracts are a front to our rights to freely bargain collective agreements and that the freezing of teachers' assets is simply an attempt to silence dissidents and all our right to political protest. As workers at the University of BC, we are fearful we will be next. If the government is able to break the teachers and we are not going to let them, they will then turn their attention to workers at BC universities and impose collective agreements on all of us. This will mean a continued guarantee of wages falling far behind inflation, of pension and benefits under tax, and a steady deterioration on labor relations and the end to labor peace. We applaud the teachers for taking this step, for st remaining strong for all of us. service teachers, the students in our uh, BED program in the Faculty of Education, a member of uh, the department I'm proud to be a member of, curriculum studies, her name is Kit Brower. Welcome again. I'm going to talk to you in the only way that I know how, which is to tell some personal stories because I think what we need to realize is the kinds of lives that are being affected by this strike in terms of what teachers are doing to be in support of what your working and learning conditions will be when you get into the teaching profession. I get a lot of calls right now. My husband's a teacher, my friends are teachers, 
I've been a teacher for 30 years in British Columbia. At night, I talk to people about how depressed they are on what they've seen as the deterioration of teaching and learning conditions in British Columbia and the stand they've had to take, which was a very hard stand for them to take, to actually leave schools, to actually break the law, to actually be not with the kids that they are in there to teach. It is very hard on teachers right now. They appreciate the fire department in Delta that came to my husband's school yesterday with coffee and all of their lights blaring and uh, goodies. I would suggest if you're planning to do that, although my husband has been able to get his 10,000 steps in every morning before 11 o'clock walking the line, would you take apples instead of goodies? He's starting to put on weight anyway. You'll be, I, they are very thrilled with the student teachers that have come out. I know in one of our cohorts here, they've been baking cookies and going into schools and school lines, or not into schools, they certainly have not been doing that, I take that all back. They've been going to schools and onto the picket line and taking that message of support. It doesn't have to be gifts of anything else other than support. For our student teachers, compassion when you get back into the schools. Teachers are doing a lot for you so that your professional life can be worthwhile. Please take that compassion with you when you go back and become colleagues with them on your student teaching experience because they care about you in the same way they care about the kids in their classrooms. Thank you. Next we have a parent uh, of the Vancouver School Board student. I also happens to be a member of the uh, Department of Anthropology and Sociology here in UBC. His name is Charles Menzies. Thank you again uh, for those of you who saw me at 1130. But I want to say I'm really pleased to see so many people here. Because one of the, that's very important right now is the maintenance of support to keep on the pressure. I'm a parent who's been very involved in the parent advisory councils in Vancouver for many, many years here, and I know how difficult it is often to get people out, but one of the things we've been doing as parents, and we've been going out to picket lines, and one of the things you really need to do is you need to keep the teachers going so they understand that we do support them, that not listen to the lies and the mistruths that some so-called leaders of parents are saying. The, the British Columbia Confederation of Parent Advisory Councils, writers we're speaking, are engaged in a, in a public press conference where they purport to claim the parents don't support teachers. Yeah. That's not true. Let me I start. Prince Rupert is a parent-based support group that's been picketing with parents. In Nelson, parents have been on the forefront of the struggle supporting, supporting our teachers. In Comox, on Port Alberni, and here in Vancouver, and Gordon Campbell's own writing, a hundred parents and children went to Quinton Mill Elementary. Right in the heart of the beach. And for any of you who have kids or friends or live in the community of Kitsilano, I want to let you know right now that tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, a group of parents and our friends and our supporters and the teacher supporters, we're going to be there on the picket line showing that we care and that we know that our teachers care too. And that's why they're there and that's why we're standing beside them, not behind them. We're standing beside you. Keep up the pressure. Show the support. Let's go for our teachers. Our next speakers are representatives of the graduate students in the Faculty of Education. It's uh, Wendy Nielsen and Carl Pack. Hello everybody. We come before you as graduate students who at one time were teachers, concerned over the lives of teachers, the lives of students, and bettering the system of education in the province as well as in the country. Our research interests 
pass on beyond the borders of this university. We work with teacher educators here, we work with student teachers, we also come from a background as teachers ourselves, so we're very much in this together. We are part of a larger organization and we're proud to be so. I'm originally uh, a teacher from New Brunswick and moved to British Columbia and must say I'm absolutely appalled by the actions of this government and cannot, could not believe it when uh, Bill 12 was passed and could not believe it when I watched how the rights of teachers, the bargaining rights of teachers were absolutely stripped away. And so I say fight on for your rights, fight on for the rights of students and just continue on fighting. My interests are in uh, social studies education and citizenship education. And when I watch the government of this, this province say how the teachers are sh um, showing uh, a lack of respect and, a, and are showing a, giving a bad example of citizenship to the students, quite frankly, I can't see a better example of citizenship for the students of our province. to dissent and this is exactly the kind of example we need to be setting for our students so keep on fighting and setting this example you be 2278 knows all about uh trials and tribulations with contracts and our next speaker is a representative from 2278 that's the uh, union of uh, teaching assistants here at UBC his name's David Alscarsi I, I, I want to talk just briefly for those of you who don't know about what happened to the teaching assistants in 2003 when we were trying to play by the rules and uh, negotiate a new contract with the university. Uh, basically, the provincial government decided that they didn't like the rules and they imposed a contract on us and we had no say in the matter, the negotiation stopped. Uh, unfortunately, at that point, we basically bowed our heads and we went home and we accepted it. And I have to say that I'm really really thrilled to see that the teachers and the BCTF aren't bowing their heads and they're not going home and they're not taking it and they're standing up for their rights. Yeah! So in 2003 I had a contract imposed on me and my work here at UBC and now in 2005 my sister who's a high school teacher in West Vancouver that a contract imposed on her by the same provincial government. And I, I don't know how much longer this can go on before we run out of family members for them to impose contracts on. But the one thing that's really, really bothered me about what Gordon Campbell and the Liberals have been saying is they've said, well, we've there's nothing to negotiate. There is a contract, and it's agreed to, and it's done. And they also have been saying that all of the other public sector workers, they successfully negotiated a 0% pay raise. The HEU were forced back to work through huge fines, legislation, and court action. That's not a successful negotiation. The BC ferry workers were forced back to work through huge fines, legislation, and court action. Again, that's not, ne that's not negotiations. The workers at UBC were forced back to work through fines, or the threat of fines, court action, legislation. Almost every group of public employees in the province has either been legislated back to work or basically uh, been told they would be legislated back to work unless they accepted what the provincial government was saying. I don't know, that doesn't sound like negotiations to me. That sounds a lot, a lot like dictating the way things are supposed to run in this province and I don't think that's what should happen in an elected government. They're supposed to negotiate and discuss and reach agreements with the people about the way we, the voters, and we, the citizens of British Columbia, want the province to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.